In this episode of Author Showcase, we meet new authors and publishers at a pop-up book fair at the Empty Bottle in Chicago. Be sure to visit AuthorsBroadcast.com to learn all about new books and authors. My name is Jacob Nab. I'm a senior editor of Curbside Splendor Publishing and editor-in-chief of ACM. I'm the organizer of today's event. Uh, we basically were talking with John Rich from the Chicago Book Expo about doing uh, some kind of a book vendors event like happened last year in Uptown. John was able to pull off an event where lots of booksellers got into the old border space in Uptown and everyone was really happy with the event. And so we were trying to do it at the Aragon Ballroom, and it just sort of fell through for whatever reason. So here we are today. Uh, we talked with John, Victor, and I at Curbside Splendor about the idea of doing a pop-up book fair, something that was a little less serious but also resonant. And so we contacted a bunch of publishers that we know and people that make books and bands, and we contacted the Into Bottle, and the event fell together. The idea was that everyone can come. There's no charge. It's free and uh, the public can come as long as they RSVP and buy books. So here we are. Hi, I'm David David Katzman. I'm an, um, a novelist and a fiction writer, and I've published two novels. My most recent one is called A Greater Monster. I published it at the end of uh, last year, November 2011. And my previous novel is called Death by Zamboni, which I published uh, about 10 years ago. So A Greater Monster is a very um, a unusual experimental book. Um, I always try to do something new and original that hasn't been done before. I like to challenge myself to do um, creative uh, experiences. Um, so this book actually features, uh, it's a novel, but it features 65 pages of illustrations, a lot of graphic design, visual text poetry. Um, there are two hidden uh, web links, URLs in the book that lead to digital experiences. One is original music that I co-composed with um, a member of the band Muka Paza. Uh, there's a scene in the book where these characters are playing instruments together, so we wrote the song that they're playing and uh, recorded it, on, hosted it on this website, so you can read about the experience of the music and then you can go to the site and hear the original song. Um, so it's, it's, it's a very unusual, strange trip into an alternate reality um, that features a lot of very unusual, um, original kind of cross-media elements. So Death by Zamboni was my first novel, also very experimental. I call it an absurdist satire. Um, it's kind of like if Monty Python wrote a noir detective story or a little bit like South Park wrote a noir detective story. It's, you know, a satire of commercialism, um, corporate America, um, it's totally ludicrous and very wacky. So, <laughs> thanks. Hellfire and Damnation 2, the sequel to 2011's award-winning Hellfire and Damnation, is a remarkable collection of somber, noirish, flat-out scary, and altogether satisfying stories, says best-selling New York Times author John Lamb. He compares Connie Corcoran Wilson's work to King, Bradbury, and Philip K. Dick, saying, Her tight, twisty tales establish her as a force to be reckoned with. The frame is once again Dante's Inferno, and the nine circles of hell and the crimes punished there. This time there are illustrations and a From the Author section as well. Gary Bronbeck, five-time Bram Stoker winner, agrees with John Land, saying, Wilson surpasses her previous Hellfire and Damnation with this sequel. I really don't know how she managed to do it. The 11 short stories within Hellfire and Damnation 2 were described as superb by author Brian Pinkerton. Nate Kenyon, award-winning author of Diablo, The Order, calls Hellfire and Damnation 2 an inspiring collection, and Kenyon adds, don't miss it. Hellfire and Damnation 2 by Connie Corcoran Wilson is available online and at your favorite bookseller. Hi, I'm 
Becky Robinson. I'm here at the Empty Bottle pop-up book fair, and I don't know, it's really great. There's a lot of wonderful authors here, and there's lots of fun things you can do, like even destroy a book, which is weird in this world of e-readers and everything, but I know I'm having a lot of fun, so I'm glad to be here. My name is Emily Victorson. I'm from Allium Press of Chicago. We publish fiction with a Chicago connection. Our tagline is Rescuing Chicago from Capone, One Book at a Time. And we publish uh, mysteries, thrillers, historical fiction, literary fiction, and young adult fiction, all with a Chicago connection. I'll tell you a little bit about our three most recent titles. Uh, Company Orders by David Walker is a contemporary thriller. The main character is a Chicago Catholic priest who's a good man, but he's having a crisis of faith. And a event that happened in his younger days comes back to uh, haunt him. And to save somebody who he loves, he has to get involved with a woman who may be from a secret government agency. And it ends with a very exciting um, scene in uh, the Guyanese jungle where he has to fight for his life. Uh, Francis McNamara's Death at Woods Hole is the fourth in the Emily Cabot mystery series. The main character is a young woman who's one of the first graduate students at the University of Chicago when they let women go to graduate school. Uh, the first book was called Death at the Fair. It takes place at the World's Columbian Exposition. Then she goes Death at uh, Hull House, Death at Pullman during the Pullman strike, and this is the fourth one. And then our most recent title is Her Mother's Secret by Barbara Garland Polakoff, which is a, uh, our first young adult novel, historical fiction. It takes place in Chicago in 1893 about a young Jewish girl who uh, takes art classes at Hull House and visits the World's Columbian Exposition, but mostly it's a family story about her relationship with her family. My name is Jennifer Carmen, and this is my book, Alice. It's spelled with 11 A's. It's a book of poetry in 11 sections, but also works as a performance text. I think of it as a text sound epic. It's a book of poetry where each of the poems is also a polyvocal score. So when I read from this book, I always read interactively with other writers or the audience as the chorus. Uh, it's a book of poetry based upon my time living in Japan and traveling through Asia. There's also another voice in the poem that's based on Alice in Wonderland, which is where I get the title. And there's a third voice in the poems that's based upon a very kind of strange Japanese textbook from 1963. So it's a voice based on miscommunication and mistranslation. An aged widower with an acute awareness of his own mental decline is being moved across country at his daughter's insistence. Instead of flying, he chooses to join his grandson on a 3,000-mile road trip that includes daily readings to an urn of ashes, and for the two travelers becomes a spiritual journey of self-discovery and harsh realities. A must-read roller coaster of emotions, a cathartic tale of spiritual alignment and personal growth. Reading to Jane is an amazing story of loss and grief and the recovery that accompanies it. A fast read that is thought-provoking, funny, heartwarming, and uncannily familiar. The reader becomes part of the family, going along for a physical and symbolic journey with unlikely companions, each with their own tragic past. In route at campgrounds and rest stops, the cross-country travelers meet several colorful characters and eventually befriend a woman who is coping with an unspeakable tragedy that causes her to question her most deeply held beliefs. Her growing anger ultimately forces her to confront the demons of her past. Reading to Jane combines the reality of aging, the brashness of youth, the stigma of societal outcasts, and the turmoil of loss into an intricately woven three-part adventure. Will Mary be consumed by her rage or will she find a way out of the darkness? Mary and her unlikely companions come together in an unforgettable conclusion that contains all the surprises, humor, and warmth that author Carol Marshall is known for.
You can read this novel simply for the pleasure of its wonderful story and unique collection of bizarre yet relatable characters. But each of the characters in Reading to Jane has something to teach us. This book is a journey to a meaningful existence and can point you in the direction of a more joyful and harmonious way to live. You won't want to miss Reading to Jane. Available at Amazon.com. Hi, I'm Gina Frangello. I run Other Voices Books, which launched out of Other Voices Magazine, which had been around since 1984. The press has been here since 2005, and we've done 10 books to date. And we were one of the first um, indie all fiction presses running out of Chicago. So one of our, our most recent title is Men Undressed, which is an anthology, pretty groundbreaking, of um, 29 women writers who are writing sexual stories from the male point of view. So if you think of in terms of things that Henry Miller, Philip Roth, writers, D.H. Lawrence have been doing for generations in terms of writing from the female point of view. Um, uh, the book that came out right prior to that is Currency, which is a thriller set in Thailand by debut Chicago writer Zoe Zolbrod. And that book, um, it, it's sort of about international animal smuggling. It's, um, it's a combination thriller love story. It's really, really compelling and just kind of uh, genre bending. So that's, a, that's an exciting read. And... Um, then the third book that I'm showing you guys is actually not a book that Other Voices Books has put out, but a book by my longtime business partner, Stacey Beerlein, who came out with another Chicago press, um, Elephant Rock Books, which and her book is called A Vacation on the Island of Ex-Boyfriends. It's a super, super sexy collection, um, basically just about the various... Uh, miscommunications between men and women set in many exotic locales. A really, really cool book and uh, a lot of the linguistic wordplay of people like Lori Moore. Um, it's, it's great. A, a, a lot of fans of Susan Mino might really like it. So I wanted to tell you about that one as well. So. Hi, my name is Cynthia Palayo and I'm the publisher of Burial Day Books. Burial Day is a supernatural horror press and we specialize in literary horror. Think of Edgar Allan Poe, um, H.P. Lovecraft, Shirley Jackson. We try to keep away from uh, you know, graphic content and try to focus more on horror, on the unseen and um, just more uh, the types of horror that alludes to things under the bed, things hidden in the closet, and so we've been publishing now for two years. We have two anthologies out. Our first anthology um, was released in 2011. Our second anthology was just released this past Halloween, 2012. And we've been very fortunate to feature two, um, to feature you know very important authors. Uh, our 2011 collection featured John Everson, who is a Bram Stoker Award-winning author. Our 2012 collection featured Daniel Krauss, who's an Odyssey Award-winning author, as well as um, nominated by the Horror Writers Association, and he's working on a novel with uh, Oscar-winning director Guillermo del Toro. And I have two books I'd like to talk to you quickly about. The first one is the Gothic Blue Book. So this is the anthology that Burial Day Books works on. And it, uh, each year we try to feature about 14 authors or so. And the short, short, we have short stories, poems. They run about 3,500 words, but you know the, they, they move fast, but they definitely leave a great impression. And the other book I just want to mention quickly is La Turia. And I wrote La Turia, and it's a short story collection that's based on the Mexican board game of, of board game of chance. And think of it like bingo. As opposed to matching up numbers, you're matching up cards. Um, and so with La Turia, each of the cards has a very profound image. There's a, a picture of a little devil, a picture of a skeleton. And so what I did for two years, I researched Latin American myth, folklore, and superstition, and I applied one short story to each of the cards. And we have some self-contained short stories, some poems, some abstract pieces. And so these are just two of the examples that Burial Day Books has published. This is a terrifying, intense story of the dark people and places that lurk just beneath the surface of seemingly normal, small-town America. Tad McGreevy dreams about evil in horrifyingly vivid detail, 
but doesn't know if the evil acts he witnesses in his nightmares are happening now, are in the past, or are going to occur in the future. Thankfully, he has a power that he has never revealed that will allow him to wage a battle to the death against those who would harm the ones he loves. Read The Color of Evil by Connie Corcoran Wilson. Hi, I'm Michael Mary. I am a, an author and a publisher. Uh, I've got two of my own books out. One is uh, Wise Men and Other Stories, which is a collection of holiday-related essays. And the other book that I wrote is called The Note, which is uh, about the power of appreciation. Uh, and then in addition to that, I've started publishing other authors uh, with my publishing company, Dream of Things. So very excited to be working with uh, writers in the Chicago area and across the country. Uh, the Note is a, a book that was inspired by a note that I received from my youngest sister one Christmas, thanking me for something I had done years ago that I had forgotten about. Uh, but it really touched me, and so I ended up writing a, a, an article about it for the local paper, and a friend convinced me that I should turn it into a book. So The Note tells the story of the note from my little sister, kind of the story behind it. And then the second half of the book goes on to talk about appreciation, why it's important, uh, why people don't share appreciation, why they should, and then kind of step by step, how to write a note of appreciation. Uh, hi, my name is Chris Mendius. I'm with Anything Goes Publishing, and this is my novel, Spoonful. Spoonful is about uh, uh, the main character is Michael Lear and his friends. There's some junkies that live in Wicker Park in the late 90s as that neighborhood was changing and the story uh, follows them uh, th as they it just follows them through that period and the trouble they get into like I said they are junkies so it's a new adventure every day but uh, the, the book has got some has gotten some critical acclaim and uh, it's a good read so if you get a chance check it out Spoonful my name is Cindy Fetcher, and I am one of two founding editors of Gray's Magazine, which is Chicago's food and literature magazine based in the Logan Square neighborhood. We are an ad-free, recycled paper printed magazine that tries to get at the idea of food in community. So we sort of call ourselves the anti-food food magazine. We have no recipes. We have no restaurant reviews. Instead, we focus on poetry, fiction, interviews reviews, nonfiction, photo spreads, and original art from writers and artists around the United States, all dealing with the notion of the way that food connects to daily life. So you can purchase Grays at five retailers in Chicago, indie retailers. We are at Quimby's, Women and Children First, Uncharted Books, Dill Pickle Grocery Store, and Green Grocer. You can also purchase Grays at two bookstores in Brooklyn, Spoonville Bookstore and Desert Island Comics. The healing powers of coffee is percolating with information about the world's favorite new health food. This personable, reader-friendly, revolutionary book includes interviews with medical doctors, researchers, and coffee roasters who reveal the amazing healing powers of the delicious brew served up with a lively jolt of past and present coffee culture. The path to better health and well-being is right under your nose. Whether you prefer regular decaf or flavored coffees, recent studies have shown that coffee's magical beans can reduce your risk of cancer, heart disease, and diabetes, as well as help you slim down and shape up. Wake up and smell the coffee, then serve yourself a steaming cup of comfort filled with more antioxidants than tea or cocoa and even more than renowned antioxidant-rich blueberries or oranges. In the healing powers of coffee, you'll find the author's exclusive, eye-opening, warm and witty real-life stories, more than 50 home cures that fight brain fog, fatigue, headache, jet lag, low libido, moodiness, muscle pain, and stress, plus beauty and anti-aging treatments and eco-friendly household uses. Find out why this ancient elixir has gone from vice to virtue 
and how to incorporate coffee in Mediterranean-style healthful recipes like cappuccino biscotti, coffee chili, java-style stuffed bell peppers, plus do-it-yourself espresso drinks. Brew a pot of your favorite blend, nature's surprising superfood, and enjoy reading The Healing Powers of Coffee. Available now at your favorite bookseller. My name is Zach Rudin. I'm from Agate Publishing. Uh, we're based in Evanston, Illinois. Uh, we've been around for about 10 years now, and we have a few different uh, niche imprints. We have Surrey, which does cookbooks, cocktails, entertaining books. Uh, B2 are our business titles. Uh, Bolden, we do African American fiction and nonfiction. And our newest imprint is called Midway Books, which is focused on Midwestern regional topics, uh, particularly focusing on Chicago. And then we also have a solely digital imprint called Agate Digital, publishing standalone ebooks. Uh, we work with various media partners, such as the Chicago Tribune, uh, using their archival content to make uh, straight to ebook editions. And um, Three of probably my favorite books of ours and uh, our most popular uh, we have The Indian Slow Cooker by Anupi Singla, who is from Lincoln Park. Uh, she is, this is actually the best selling Indian cookbook on Amazon and has been uh, for the two years since it's come out. Um, and it's just focused on making Indian food more accessible for everyone, especially with the slow cooker. It's really simple. But all the recipes are really helpful uh, and really delicious, too. You know, someone like me, I'm not an expert chef, but uh, I can make anything from here with just the right spices, and it's fantastic. Um, another one of our titles from our Bolden imprint is Where the Line Bleeds. Uh, Jasmine Ward actually won the National Book Award for her second book, Salvage the Bones, and this is her debut novel. Um, it's about the Mississippi Gulfport region. Uh, very, It's a very unique, very interesting part of the country, very rural very poor African-American communities uh, and it is so beautifully written and it seems like you're in a completely different world and a completely different culture. Uh, it's a terrific book. And then The New Old Bar, uh, this is one of our newest books just published a couple weeks ago, November 15th, uh, and also from our Midway imprint. It's by the Hardy Boys who were the winners of, uh, the first winners of the Next Food Network star they are a cater catering uh, restaurant duo. They have the restaurant Hardy up on Broadway and around Grace. And this is terrific Prohibition era cocktails. Um, really simple and straightforward. Not so esoteric and, you know, the you need to be a really expert bartender to make them. But it just home cocktail book, great gift, you know, friends and family especially because then they have to invite you over for cocktails if you give them a cocktail book. Otherwise, they're rude. Uh, but it's really a terrific book and really simple and straightforward recipes. You can find our books at agatepublishing.com. That's A-G-A-T-E publishing.com. My name is Jacob Singer. I write for Anobium and Handshake, and you're watching Authors Showcase. Hi, I'm David Schneiderman, and we're here at the Pop-Up Book Fair at the Empty Bottle. There is a board with many staples behind me. So basically, the idea is that we're going to continue to do a series of pop-up book fairs in Chicago. This is the first, and uh, I would, I'm hesitant to declare it a success before it's over, but I think it's been a pretty good success. We've had a really nice crowd of people come through. 
and the booksellers seem to be doing pretty well. We're going to do another one in March. We'd like to make this one more accessible to all ages so that teenagers and younger kids can come. The bottle's liquor license doesn't quite allow for that. We'd like to do probably four a year of these pop-up book fairs, one for each season. The idea being that we can do these kinds of events that are about raising awareness and getting people together and networking, that no one really needs to bear too much burden of debt or money or organizing. And so we provide the space and the organization and people come out. So the next one will be in March for the faux AWP or false AWP. And after that, who knows? Welcome to AuthorsBroadcast.com. In this nifty book, the author delivers exactly what he promises, a variety of strategies and techniques that enable you to get your precious business cards into the willing hands of your targeted potential prospects. Improve communication, find and attract business allies, plant seeds that will grow your business, increase referrals and word of mouth opportunities, Learn how to turn your business card into business. Visit businesscardtobusiness.com to learn more. We are anxious to hear from our Author Showcase viewers. Visit authorsbroadcast.com slash TV to leave a comment. Your feedback is important to us. We want to know what you think about the show and if there's any specific information you would like us to include. We produce a new Author Showcase episode every month, and your comments and suggestions may be used in a future episode. So visit us online at authorsbroadcast.com TV. In today's fast-paced business environment, people want to know as quickly as possible what your website is about and how you can help solve their problems. A fast show and tell will keep visitors on your site longer and help them better understand your product or service. Reno Lovison Marketing produces website video and provides a variety of marketing-related services for growing businesses. I predict nearly every company will have at least one video or multimedia presentation on their website and we want to help make that happen. Let us show you how to use video on the web to promote your website, product or service, announce your new book, or provide training to your staff, distributors or end users. Take a look at some of our example videos and explore some of our other services. Call or email me personally today. Let me know what you're hoping to achieve and I'll show you how we can help. About 250 miles north of Chicago, Door County is Wisconsin's premier vacation destination, offering visitors of all ages outdoor fun combined with great food, performing arts, shopping, and of course, natural beauty. DoorCountyNavigator.com will help you find the perfect place to stay, play, and dine, providing all the resources you'll need to plan your trip. Be in the know before you go. To learn more about Door County, tune in to A Peek Inside the Door, Seen weekly on Chicago Cable, Channel 25.